Okay, so I have added different color options. I'm not finished yet with my type, but I'm showing you kind of the different elements that can go into it. We turn them all off and then just walk you through them. So first I brought in my vector type. There it is. You can see it's a smart object layer. On top of it, I drew with my lasso a shape that fills in behind the clouds. And there's a little gap here. I can even just use my paintbrush on that layer and paint it in. And because it's got a layer style on it that gives it this subtle rainbow gradation, you can see that layer style, the gradient overlay, it's going to add that in wherever I paint it. On top of that, I have a copy of the vector type. So again, it's like a sandwich. And then I'll turn that layer style on. So I've got a rainbow behind it. Turn that off for the moment so you can see. Now on top of my vector type copy, I selected with the magic wand and contiguous all the interior outline and highlight shapes. And I filled that with a white. I can add a layer style to that at any time. I can give it a color. I can give it a gradient. I can give it a different kind of gradient. But I think I want to keep it pretty bright. So let's maybe look at oranges. Let's, let's try this kind of peachy one. And I can, of course, affect its opacity. But I think white's going to be pretty effective. <laughs> so I'll make that really subtle. Next, I filled in the inside of this, these letter forms, right? So I can color those and play with those layer styles. I can make those different colors. Fill those with different gradients. Let's try a kind of a cream color. Maybe a lower opacity with the gradient overlay. And let's try the basics. I don't know if I like all these different folders of, of options. <laughs> now for gradients, but I will adjust. Just a whole lot of options. All right. And then on top of that, I have the nest. I just copied that part of the vector and then added by duplicating it with command J. I was able to add unique layer styles to that. I just have a stroke and a color overlay. I can always add to that. I can add a gradient. And I have a, the white stroke on it. And then same thing with the little feather shapes next to it. So if I wanted to change that color overlay from yellow to something else, I certainly could. And then, of course, I can add a gradient to that. So they look more like leaves. So let's turn on that cloud background. And that's where I left it. Now, all of this is modifying my assignment five. So I need to save it as something else. I don't want to overwrite my assignment five, which was just the colored spot illustration. And this is now 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And I'm adding a lot of elements. So these files get big. So this is our master file. And you want to make sure as you add new elements, as you add new layers, you understand what they're doing, what they're adding to the project. So I'm just going to save this just to the desktop. And this is going to be assignment six. And this is just my color poster but it's gonna contain all the vectors for the type 
and for the spot illustration, and then all the different coloring solutions and layer styles I use, both hand painted and controlled through the options of layer styles. So I can still take that vector and play with its effects. Maybe take that stroke off and then change its color overlay. Maybe I want it to be pretty dark, but not black, right? Maybe I want it to be like a dark blue. Go with our campus colors. Maybe I want to deaden it a little bit, gray it out. Yeah, that looks good. Then maybe I want to add a little bit of a gradient behind that, but a simpler gradient than the rainbow. And then go to basics, or maybe blues. Nice steely one there. And these, these can be subtle, but you can always turn on and off these layer effects, right? So that's without the color overlay. That's just the subtle blue gradient. And that's without the gradient. So the gradient kind of softens the harshness of, the, of that blue color overlay. And that complements my, my color holds on my spot illustration a little bit better. Okay, now, if I'm happy with the coloring of the illustration and the lettering, now I need to figure out a background that's more interesting than middle gray. And for this, I could do a few things. I could do a vector shape. So I'm just going to go back to my backgrounds, make an, and then just go to my shape tools, and maybe, just to be extra fancy, I'll use the rectangle tool. I was going to use a rounded rectangle tool, but I'll just use the rectangle tool. And I'll draw it in. And then I could always double click that. That's a vector rectangle. And I could fill that with a gradient if I wanted. And I could create my background for my poster out of these tools. Remember, you can always customize your gradients too. Do all kinds of things. And maybe I want to add a texture to it. Play with the scale of that texture. Maybe pick a different texture. Soften it a little bit, just so it looks like kind of pressed paper. But I don't really love the emboss that that gives. But you can see the preview there. There's all kinds of things. So I can, I can play with it that way. Or I can go back to our compositing skills and just go to Google Images and search for, you know, um, so I search for gradient sky poster background on Google Images. And then I want to limit with my tools to large. And because it's just a background, it's going to be soft resolution. So I want it to be large. But this is just the background of my poster. So I'm not as, as concerned about finding public domain versions of this, though we can also look for this, of course, on Pixabay. Because often there's a really great one, but it will have watermarks in it and it, it becomes a pain to use. So let's just go to Pixabay. So in Pixabay, I say gradient sky poster background. Let's see what we get. We have to, because I haven't logged in, I have to scroll past the sponsored ones. So remember to log in to get the best out of Pixabay. Come on. Work, work, work. And you can just log in with your Gmail. Okay, now that I'm logged in, there's one image. This is called a halftone. And it's actually a vector. 
which is fantastic. I'm going to download that. Maybe that's a, an asset I'm going to use. I'm going to download it, not as a vector graphic, because I don't want to have to convert it to EPS to bring into Photoshop right now. I'm just going to download it as the largest uh, raster file. So I'll simplify my search. I'll just say cloudy sky, not in vector graphics, but in all images. I'm just looking for a texture to use for my poster. This one's pretty interesting. And I'll download the largest JPEG. Remember, there'll be at least 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. But what's great about Pixabay is they're free for commercial use. But it's fine if you find something here as well that you can use that's large, like this one's nice. It's over 1,000 pixels. If it actually does, I'm going to open the image in a new in a new tab and see. But it was miscoded, so clearly this is not that high in pixel resolution. But even so, because we use these as just background textures, even if it's tiny, that like that tiny, I can stretch it. And all that's going to do is, is soften it. So as long as I don't mind about it getting soft, I can use this for a background. If I hold down shift, I can stretch it. So this is compositing in a background. And I'm just going to fill the whole 16 by 20 space with this. Hit return. So that's one nice layer for the background. Let's take some of those other downloads and just drag and drop them in. We don't want the background to be too busy, but we want it to be visually interesting. So I drop it in, it will come on top of the other. Come on, here we go. I'm going to teach you about half toning and color separation over the next week. That's a way that we can further play with color and finishing. So I'm going to hold down shift in Photoshop here to edit this, distort it. And we're dealing with some big files now. But I like putting kind of the highlight right behind my spot illustration. But I don't like this color. So I place it. And then what do I do? I'm going to rasterize it so I can play with the color through direct adjustments. And I'm going to play with the color balance, maybe just the hue saturation. I'm going to take out a lot of that strong dark blue, because that's not what I'm looking for. I'm going to brighten it up and then desaturate it. And then maybe use it like this then take its opacity down. So that it layers on top of that gradient from behind. I can also play with different blending modes. If you remember these, like pin light, soft light. Let's try soft light and taking the opacity up. That works well up there, but it's a little too Too basic, so I think I'll keep it on normal and then just take the opacity down on another layer. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Okay. Now, if I want this to really stand out, I can use primary colors. 
I can go back to my type, my vector layer. I can use my 